Hi, we're here at the GSI in the Mechanical Test Lab, and we'd like to go over ASTM D4595, which is Wide Width Tensile Testing. Uh, first, what you need to do is uh, prepare the specimens. The specimens are actually 8 inches wide. Uh, this is critically important for woven geotextiles to precisely orient the material uh, with respect to the machine and cross-machine direction fibers, the warp and the weft. As you can see here, this orientation would be critical, especially if you have a yarn bundle that's of extremely uh, high strength. As far as the machine direction, it's off of the, uh, the roll of material, and this orientation, how the specimens are cut, is critically important. It gets more significant when you have uh, very high strength materials, high strength polyesters, and then you're gonna have to orient that. You sometimes have to do that with a hot knife rather than a pair of scissors or a pair of shears. In all cases, this is an eight inch wide specimen. The properties which you'd like to obtain for, from this method are strength, elongation, and modulus. Uh, as far as the equipment is concerned, there, what you're gonna need is a, a continuous rate of extension machine, a set of grips, and there are many different grips that are available for this. Um, you see the capstan grips here, and you see the uh, wedge type configuration over here. We're going to demonstrate both of them to you. In addition to that, you're going to have to measure uh, some sort of elongation, and that is a uh, strain, so you need deflection. That is done o off of a uh, contact extensometer, which is shown here, or off of crosshead movement with a wedge type configuration or a uh, video extensometer, which is uh, shown back here. So you have the different varieties for uh, strain measurement. You have uh, contact, non-contact extensometers, or crosshead movement. In regards to the grips, you're going to have to uh, chase the failure with inside the uh, gauge length. The gauge length in most cases is four inches, and uh, you're going to use different padding associated with the grips. Sometimes that's a smooth face, sometimes serrated steel, sometimes a uh, rubber face. In this particular case we have duct tape to uh, chase the failure away from the grip interfaces. You have to have uh, failure with inside the gauge length and you also have to have the grips not incipiate the failure. There are two critical things for it. So uh, continuous rate of extension, extensometer, and uh, some sort of gripping configuration for this. Uh, you'll take uh, specimens and you'll do uh, six specimens in the machine direction, six uh, specimens in the cross machine direction. You'd condition the uh, textile typically for two hours at 21 plus or minus two degrees C. There is a provision to test the uh, specimen wet versus dry. In almost 95% uh, of the cases, it's uh, tested in a dry configuration. You want to make sure you mount the specimen uh, uniformly, which is critically important. And also, there's a preload associated with it. The preload is 1% uh, uh, of the breaking force of the material. So typically, if you're not a manufacturer and you know, don't know the properties of the textile, you're gonna to have to uh, do one experiment in the beginning just to get the breaking force, and you need to preload 1% uh, of that for the test. Uh, the specimens are typically run at 10% per minute, and again, that's based on the gauge length that you're using. Most people use a four inch gauge length, or 100 millimeters, that uh, correlates to uh, 10 millimeters per minute, or 0.4 inches per minute. Uh, the specimens uh, are set up in the jaws, and then we'll actually go into breaking the material now. Okay, we're here uh, with the wedge type grips. I've prepped the sample. This is an 8 inch wide specimen, and now setting it into the grips, the upper one first, and then the lower one. We have a universal one here, which uh, gives us the ability to uh, even things out. And now the preload. I know this gets a 50-pound uh, preload associated with it. So uh, I'm ready now to uh, test. 
I'll uh, run the test at uh, 0.4 inches per minute or 10% per minute and uh, away we go. It's loading and picking up load. You can see it, it's uh, quite taut across here. We like to get failure with inside the, uh, the gauge length which is 4 inches 100 millimeter across here. This was the specimen originally and being held you can see the duct tape on the bottom which is uh, protecting the uh, material from a failure. We're uh, loading quite nicely and you'll see the material shift. It failed right in the center and this is a beautiful break. I'll continue it up. And this is a, a lovely failure right in the center of the material. Uh, you see how the uh, duct tape protected the material and uh, it worked quite well in these uh, Curtis Sure Grips. Uh, this material is fine. We'll move over to uh, take a look at the uh, stress strain curve. Okay, this is the load extension plot that you see in front of you. Uh, we peaked out around uh, 2,375 pounds. Uh, we picked up uh, load quite nicely. Uh, you could back off uh, 1, 2, 5, and 7% modulus quite easily. This load is uh, converted into pounds per inch uh, by dividing by 8. The extension is converted into strain or elongation uh, by dividing the uh, deflection, the extension, divided by uh, 4 or 100 millimeters, which was the gauge length. Uh, it's a beautiful curve and uh, set up quite nicely for analysis uh, for 4595. Okay, we're now using a different continuous rate of extension machine. Uh, this is a much higher capacity machine than we showed you in the other uh, video. These are capstan grips or roller grips. It has a specimen that's 8 inches wide or 200 millimeters, but it's much longer in length. This is 51 inches in length. Um, for the keepers or 1.3 meter uh, long specimen. We do have a, a rub sheet and that rub sheet in between the wraps is typically a piece of uh, polyethylene and as you're shown in the close-up there's a keeper in the back of these capstan grips that hold the whole thing together. There's a universal uh, joint up top and an extensometer. This is a clip-on external a contact extensometer. We do have the ability to use a non-contact extensometer and that can be in the either in capacity of a video extensometer like this or a uh, IR extensometer which you'll see in the, uh, the subsequent slide. We'll now run the test. Okay we're at the start of the test now and uh, here you see the contact extensometer it is tethered with a, uh, a cord so that we don't lose it at the end of the test. You don't want it falling on the floor. But uh, we're uh, continuing the test. The, the, the load is on and it's continuing to run. You'll see it in time lapse uh, going forward now. Okay, you can hear the material failing now. Uh, it's pretty pronounced. Uh, it started over here. It's evenly distributed across the uh, specimen. Um, it's past the ultimate strength, so we're going to take the extensometer off and uh, limit the test. So this is now suspended, but now we're going to stop the test on the machine, and then I'm going to jog the uh, specimen up so here we go and I'm running it really rapidly and you can see the failure is right here in the in the center section which is exactly what we like to see it's uh, very even and uh, certainly uh, pronounced it started over on this far side here and then propagated across we made use of the universal on the machine but a very nice test, wide width, high strength uh, sample. Okay, we had a really nice curve here. The initial modulus you can see is strong. 
then goes up to a peak of uh, 10,740 pounds, and this is load in pounds versus displacement. Had a pronounced rupture, and then we took the uh, extensometer off. It's a beautifully drawn curve and uh, worked very well. We're now going to move over to a different continuous rate of extension machine for wide width uh, geogrid testing. Okay, this is again another uh, continuous rate of extension machine at GSI. Uh, we're now testing a uniaxial geogrid under ASTM D6637. There are three methods, A, B, and C. We'll demonstrate the B method to you. A is with a, a single rib and C is with multiple layers of uh, geogrid. But B is typical one and this is on a wide width uh, specimen which is uh, at least 200 millimeters or eight inches wide. We set it up in here and please realize the uh, grip separation is from the, uh, the ribs. So you must have uh, three ribs when setting it up. We have a universal on here and the Curtis grips will clamp down on things. Big thing that you need to do is cut the outer um, rib away. This is easy to forget and uh, this is how the specimen should be prepared with the outer two. So we're only testing uh, seven ribs in this configuration. We will put the uh, preload on it and then subsequent to that start the test but we're ready to run at 10% uh, per minute. The test is now underway and this specimen is being uh, pulled apart at 10% per minute. You can see the opening up of the uh, material here and we're elongating uh, quite nicely. The initial portion of the curve is uh, for modulus. You're very interested in the 1, 2, and 5% modulus of this material. We like failure within the gauge length and we cannot have the grips incipiate the failure. This happens to be a polyethylene punched and drawn geogrid and uh, it's progressing quite nicely. Okay, we got to the failure. Uh, you heard the audible at the end. The failure was a, in the gauge length right here in the center, which is good with these three ribs. The failure was not initiated by the, uh, the grips, which is fine, and the, the rupture was quite satisfactory. We'll now progress over to the, uh, the curve. Okay, here you see the load extension plot, the initial portion of the curve, which is uh, you take the modulus from. You see the maximum, 2,193 pounds. That converts into uh, 313 pounds per rib based on seven ribs uh, across the specimen. In regards to the extension, uh, we had about uh, 1.77 inches of deflection divided by 13 gives you a strain of about 13.6% uh, strain. A very nice test and a beautiful rupture and this is the characteristic curve. Okay, from the initial portion of the video we saw a low strength woven geotextile in the first uh, segment. The second segment was high strength geotextile, a PET geotextile with captain, capstan grips, and then the last segment was ASTM 6637 geogrid testing, uniaxial geogrid. It's been a pleasure being with you. Thanks for listening and uh, signing out from GSI. Hope you're well. Bye now.